Okay, so why don't we get started? Welcome to the talk on computer science and engineering. Uh, my name is Patrick Lee. I'm a local here. I graduated from CHK and I did my uh, PhD at Columbia and finally I'm here. Uh, this is the agenda for today's talk. Uh, I'm going to introduce our department and then I will introduce particularly our BCSE program. I will talk about the admission requirements and uh, curriculum structure. And finally, I will highlight some of the FAQs. Uh, before I start the talk, uh, let me play a video that shows our uh, department. The UHK Engineering is among the top institutions to study at. But apart from that, I think the faculty really places an important emphasis on innovation and provides students with a lot of exchange opportunities. There are great mentorship programs, provides students with a theoretical and practical knowledge. Usually when you think about computers, we think about technology, but computers are as much about ideas as they are about technology. The only thing I really expect from my students is to be curious and to have an open mind when they start studying the subject. You know, computer science is really for everyone. You know, if you want to build the greatest self-driving car, you can do it. If you want to study the deep mathematics of computation, there is something in that for you as well. Encouraging women to be a part of engineering field is crucial for developing a healthy scientific ecosystem. I'm glad to see the growing visibility of female students and researchers in the Faculty of Engineering and CHK, and also the growing presence of women in engineering worldwide. My research team focuses on AI for medical image analysis and robotic surgical data science in order to facilitate clinicians to deliver diagnosis and treatment with higher efficiency, accuracy, reliability, and safety. 我們大學的衝勁 我們宿舍的詞都會積極教一些活動是希望可以對於自己更多的時候會有一個清晰的概念我們也會邀請兒童去吸引的宿舍的詞一起去研發一些關於美術、動物、動物、動物、動物、動物、動物、動物、動物、
So later, I will also try to explain the differences among all these four programs. Uh, we emphasize a lot on teaching and research. We have a very strong teaching and research team. Right now, we have uh, seven ACM fellows, 13 IEEE fellows, and uh, we, uh, our colleagues also got a lot of uh, awards and titles uh, uh, through their research, and also uh, they're uh, well recognized by uh, international communities. We also rank very high uh, in different ranking systems. Um, so according to uh, US News and World Report, uh, our, AIs, uh, our AI program actually ranked the top in Hong Kong and number three globally. And our computer science also ranked very high. Uh, I'm not saying that ranking is very important, but I just give you a sense of uh, how uh, people outside uh, recognize, uh, recognize our program. As I said, uh, we have a strong alumni network. Uh, our graduates actually are, are very good in different fields, like they are working well in IT industry, education, and also banking. Let me highlight some of our sharings uh, from the CSC alumni. Um, so in 2021, he's now uh, working in Deloitte, and he also mentioned about uh, what he learned in cybersecurity and how this knowledge in cybersecurity helped him uh, in his daily jobs. Uh, this is another uh, other alumni uh, who graduated from CENG program. Um, he act, uh, she actually uh, um, shared a lot about uh, how she got the hands-on experience in uh, hardware uh, prototyping and also how she improved her communication skills and also time management skills. Uh, we also got a lot of awards uh, in international and local competitions. So here are some photos that you see from here uh, where we got uh, the first prize or, or the uh, championships. We also arranged uh, industrial visits. Uh, so after the pandemic, actually, uh, we started to organize visits uh, to companies to let students learn about uh, what is the latest development in industry, so they will learn something outside the textbooks. We have a one-year work study scheme, so students can choose to uh, work uh, in a company for one year uh, to get some uh, experience. So we are partnered with uh, different companies in Hong Kong, so students can uh, choose to work there, and they will be under the uh, supervision of uh, a supervisor both in our department as well in, in the company so that you teach and guide the students uh, through this one year uh, work study scheme. So uh, what's more is uh, there are a lot of chances that you can create your own project and innovations. Uh, we also offered a lot of uh, exchange opportunities like for myself, when I uh, did my undergrad degree at CHK, I actually uh, did one year exchange in Canada and I found that the experience was very fruitful. Uh, we are highly competitive in the job market. So 90% uh, of our graduates actually can be employed within a month of graduation. And our colleagues actually got very high teaching evaluation scores as well. So we also emphasize a lot on teaching. Uh, let me share a bit about our program. So uh, because of the uh, pandemic, uh, we realized that actually a lot of people need to work from home. So they need a lot of skills to learn, know how to work remotely and how to rely on e-commerce to survive. And that's why these companies uh, need a lot of experts in computer science and engineering to fulfill their needs. So uh, we just did some uh, studies to see the demands. And actually we found that 24 out of 28 countries listed data engineers amongst the fastest growing careers. And we believe that this trend will continue. So uh, if you uh, choose this program, uh, you can foresee that you are uh, actually, uh, uh, you're very popular uh, among these uh, countries because uh, what you learn will help them a lot. So, um, there are also a strong uh, startup ecosystem in Hong Kong, and you can see 
that um, there are a lot of examples like uh, biotechnology, artificial intelligence, smart city, financial technologies. They all need a lot of uh, people who are knowledgeable in computer science and engineering. And also right now, uh, we have uh, strong uh, connections with uh, Shenzhen, Guangzhou to set up an innovation and technology sector. So what you can learn from this program is uh, it can be many areas, like for example, in algorithms and complexities, systems and networks, software engineering, graphics and multimedia technology, and cybersecurity. So it depends on your interest. You can choose one of these areas to develop your skills. And also there are many other areas like BLSI and better systems, bioinformatics, database, computational finance, control, et cetera. So let me talk about the admission arrangements and requirements. So this is about for the first year study. So um, students will be first admitted into computer science and engineering program for the common first year of study. And at the end of the first year, they will be allocated to either computer engineering or computer science. So uh, the selection will be based on their cumulative GPA. So this will be the admission requirements for the Jupiter applicants. So um, this will be the minimum requirements. Basically, it's pretty much the same as many other programs, but I would like to highlight that we emphasize a lot on mathematics and science subjects. So you can see that uh, we also put in different weightings and we put 1.5 on mathematics and also 1.5 to 1.75 to one specific science subject and also 1.75 depending on whether you take M1, M2 or the other science subjects, etc. So if you do well in science subject and if you are interested in that, uh, you will have an advantage in the admission. It's the upper quartile. I'm sorry about that. Okay. This will be the median, uh, lower quartile. Um, so you can just take it as a reference. You can also find this on Jupiter's website. Okay. For the non Jupiter and uh, international applicants, um, actually, you can. Uh, also apply to our program, uh, but there will be, uh, we will we'll, we'll review the cases on a case by case basis. So uh, it will be based on your education background and also the academic achievements, okay? And for some uh, applications that if you uh, that satisfy certain qualifications, uh, you can apply for the admission for the advanced standards. So this is about the senior year entry. Now for some of you who may already finish your associate degree or high diploma, actually you can uh, choose to directly uh, enter a program for the third year, starting from the third year. So that means that uh, you can finish in uh, the minimum of two years for our program. So as long as you successfully completed a local course of study that leads to the AD or HD. And also you meet the uh, minimum required course and grades in English and Chinese languages, then you'll be eligible to uh, enter the our program through the senior year entry. But again, uh, I would like to point out that uh, we still need to review the case uh, on a case by case basis. So uh, we don't have a minimum scores saying that, hey, you are guaranteed to be admitted. Again, we still need to review all the applications. Now, if you're unsuccessful for the senior year entry, you are still considered for the first year entry with advanced standing 
to the computer science and engineering program. Um, basic idea is you'll be extended from up to 23 units. Uh, that will include uh, most of the uh, general studies. And basically, you'll be able to finish your studies in three years. Okay. And, uh, and then again, uh, we will consider your CGPA to decide whether you'll be admitted through this uh, senior year, year entry or through the advanced standing. Okay. So let me talk about the uh, curriculum structure. So for most of the programs at CHK, um, students need to complete a minimum of 123 units in order to graduate. Among these 123 units, nine units will be free electives, which means that you can choose any subject uh, to study at CHK to fulfill this part of the requirements. And then there'll be 39 units for the university common core courses that will include languages, general education, and physical education. So this is a summary about our university core requirements. So you can see that you need to take core courses on uh, English, Chinese, general, uh, general education, et cetera. So for the remaining, that will be 75 units that will be our major requirements. And you can see that uh, throughout these four years, uh, students will start to take the foundation course and then core course and then the uh, elective courses. Okay, so let me give you an idea what these courses are about. So computer engineering and computer science, they both share the same faculty package, which will include nine units. And then they will take the foundation courses, major required courses. And then there will be six units for the research components that will be the final year project. And then uh, there will be also some units for the stream requirements. So all together that will add up to 75 units. So for both CSCI and CENG programs, they will study the faculty package. Um, so basically that will be something about fundamentals that will apply to all the engineering programs. You can see from here that there will be a course on programming and also there will be two courses on linear algebra and multivariable calculus. And also there will be another course organized by math department, which is also about calculus. So these will be the faculty package and foundation courses. And then for C and G, uh, students will take uh, the major foundation. As I said, uh, students will choose CENG and CSCI at the end of the first, uh, first year. So starting from the second year, CENG students will take the major foundation courses. That will be uh, about uh, programming as well in C++, uh, some courses on uh, math like complex variables, differential equations, probability, and statistics. There are also some, uh, and then also the core courses, uh, including digital logic design, embedded system basics, and also computer organization and design. Also including um, data structures, software engineering, operating systems, discrete math, computer society, and engineering practicum. Some core courses are related to hardware design like uh, electric circuits and digital logic and systems. For the electives, students can choose one of the streams and study the courses within the stream. The rationale behind the streams will be allowing students to develop knowledge in a specific domain. So for CNG, there are two streams. One is on embedded system, and the other one is BRSI design and EDA. But students can also choose non-stream, which means that they can choose the elective courses under the general computer engineering program. So uh, students have the flexibility to decide what they want to take. Now here comes the CSCI. Again, CSCI students will take the foundation courses as well as the core courses. Some of the courses are also found in the CENG program, but some of the courses are specific 
for CSCI program. So for example, for CSCI here, CSCI students will take the foundation courses on Java, uh, Descript Math, Probability and Statistics, also on uh, computer organization and data structures, software engineering, formal languages and automata theory, operating systems, algorithms, and also programming languages. Computer society, practicum, and also some course related to hardware like uh, digital logic and systems. For the electives, CSCI offer six streams, uh, intelligence science, database, rich media, distributed systems, algorithms and complexity, and also data analytics. And again, students can also, also choose the non-stream, which include uh, most, uh, all, all courses under the uh, general computer science program. For both CSCI and CNG, um, they will uh, need to do a final year project. And the idea behind final year project is to let students pick an interesting topic, which may be interdisciplinary by nature, and they can apply what they have learned in the courses in the previous years and try to uh, build something based on what they learn. There could be many open topics, and these topics, as long as that will be under the mutual agreement between the students and also the supervisors, then our students can work on them. And by the way, the final year projects will be under the supervision of one of the professors, and they will be under the guidance uh, throughout the year to complete the project. Students, of course, can, they can propose their own project to the professor as long as the professor agrees. Here are some highlights about uh, the FYPs done by the students in the previous years. So this is the FYP on how to combine AI and bioinformatics to apply machine learning to predict the RNA protein interaction. This one is about AI plus multimedia. This one is about AI plus computer vision. So it will apply the AI techniques to recognize the Chinese medical herbs. This one is um, related to hardware development. So this is to build a self-driving robots. And we provide the hardware for the students to build a prototype on them. So I will highlight some of the questions that we received a lot in the past. So here is a highlight, okay. Will there be any interview well, we will arrange the interviews in mid and late June every year. Notice that not all the applicants will be interviewed, but we focus on the band A applications when we shortlist the interviewees. And in about early June or maybe earlier, we will send an invitation email. So make sure that you check your email regularly to receive the latest updates. For the non jupiter applicants, we will do the interviews batch by batch, starting from January. And what you are encouraged to do is to attach the adequate supporting documents in order to allow us to review your case comprehensively. Again, uh, we will send you invitation email if you are shortlisted and make sure that you check your email regularly. How does the major allocation work? So again, uh, when you are admitted to this program, later on, you'll be assigned to one of the majors, CENG and CSCI. Students can uh, make their choice and uh, then we will decide whether they will be admitted to which program based on their entry grades, uh, their academic performance in the first year. But I would like to point out that a relatively high percentage of students will be allocated to their preferred major. So what exactly is the difference between uh, computer engineering and computer science? You saw this earlier that uh, quite a number of courses are overlapped. In fact, that's true. CNG and CSCI by themselves, they are quite related to each other, but there's still some subtle difference. So computer, computer engineering is more about building things. 
to take care of the design and hardware and software integration. So you can see that quite a few required courses in computer engineering focus on hardware developments. And for computer science, it's more about designing software solutions. So it will take care more about coding, software architecture, and also the, some of the courses are related to the underlying theory. So it's more about software development plus computer science theories. So this will be the main differences. But I would like to say that 60% of the courses between CE and CS are, are identical. So don't feel that if you uh, enter CS, you cannot learn something from CE, or if you enter CE, you cannot learn something from CS. Uh, no, I mean, as long as you are interested in a particular courses, then you can always enroll the courses and these courses will be counted to the major electives, okay? So how many students will be admitted to BCE, BCSE, CNG, and CSCI? Well, uh, according to the latest number uh, for the first year entry to CS and C, uh, to BCSE, that'll be 107. And the senior year entry to CE and CS, that will be 11, okay? And for international students or mainland students uh, through Gaokao, uh, there's no fixed quota. So altogether, actually, every year we have about 160 and 170 new students joining um, our department. Will there be any exchange opportunity? Yes, uh, there are actually a lot, okay? Uh, the point is, as long as you want to do exchange, you are always having the opportunity to do that. You can do this with one term, or you can do this for one year, and you can go to many different places like Australia, Canada, China, France, Sweden, basically F, uh, all possible countries in the world, okay? And you can submit your applications uh, through office or academic links. And also some of the courses that you take overseas could be transferred back to Hong Kong to count the credit. So you can do the credit transfer, okay? But make sure that you do this before you actually enroll in this course. We'll, we'll double check and make sure that these courses are eligible for the credit transfer. Will there be any scholarship or financial aid? Yes, uh, we do offer a lot of scholarships and financial aids. The universities offers that. Our department also offers that. So if you go to our department website, uh, you will see that uh, we offer a lot of scholarships to our own students. We have the Yao Fellowship, we have the gold, uh, silver, and bronze uh, um, scholarships for the students with good, uh, outstanding academic performance. So you can take a look at the awardees in the past few years through our uh, department website. And the university also offers a lot of these scholarships to the students as well. What would be the career prospects of uh, CNG and CSCI graduates um, they will go to many different places, not just in Hong Kong, but also outside Hong Kong. Like we have a lot of graduates who are now working at Google, Intel, Microsoft, IBM, Apple, Facebook, etc. They also have uh, many uh, career choices. They can do many different types of jobs in different disciplines. Okay, so here are some examples. Can I transfer to AIST or other majors in year two? Yes, uh, you can actually submit an application for a change of major subject to some uh, regulations set by RES and approval by the relevant units. But if you are determined to go for AIST, then you may want to just choose AIST your, as your first choice, okay? But um, AIST is more focused on AI for CS and CE students, if you want to develop AI, you can see that uh, you can also take some AI courses as well. And for CS, actually there's a stream called Intelligent Science, which include the courses related to AI. So that means that if you are enrolled in CENG or CSCI, you still have a chance to develop knowledge in AI. So don't feel that uh, AI is only limited for AIST program. In fact, uh, you have always you always have chances to study AI topics. 
even if you're in CS and CD. Can I declare AIST, CNG, and CSCR as the second major or minor? Well, uh, the answer is unfortunately is no, because uh, they're the programs offered by the same department. But in fact, you can choose to declare the second major and minor offered by the other departments, okay? In fact, uh, when you want to have more majors or minors, it's good to have uh, much broader, um, uh, you, you want to uh, touch different areas instead of just focusing on one single area, okay? If you're still struggling uh, to choose between AIST, CNG, CSCI, what should you do? Um, well, um, I think it needs a lot of soul searching to really understand about what your what what your interest is. Uh, but you can always check our website and admission materials, and you can also join our outreach activities that we organize in the future. And later on in the sixth floor, uh, we also have. Uh, teachers and student helpers to answer your questions in case you want to know more. So this will be the contact points. Uh, again, um, you can contact us through phone, uh, email, and check our department website. And hopefully I will see you all in fall 2024.